I feel like I'm in the film Don't Look Up, seeing very clearly the urgent warnings from scientists as I watch people just carry on as normal. I'm walking among zombies that can't hear my screams no matter what I say or do. This film is another attempt to show you what I see, to show you what I know and cannot unknow. On the 24th of May 2023, I recorded all my climate aware thoughts that day. Thoughts I just wouldn't have had if I didn't know what I know. I believe this to be a typical day for a climate aware person willing to face the full truth. Nothing seems to cut through, not the science, the media, a friend, colleague or family member telling you about the climate and nature emergency. But when it does, when it does cut through and you finally face the full truth, you may see things differently. I wake up and for a minute or two, I forget about the situation we face. I roll over to see our four year old has joined us in the night. I smile as I look at him sleeping. Then it hits me like a sledgehammer. The threat is real. I must do all I can to protect my children from harm. Immediate harm like jumping in front of a car to save their life or from harm yet to come by resisting our government's genocidal plans to open up new fossil fuels in the UK. I jump in the shower. I feel too guilty to have baths anymore. By 2025, two thirds of the world's population will be facing water shortages. When the water runs dry and people can't get enough to drink, wash or feed crops, it's inevitable it will be rationed in the future. You know, for years and generations, wars have been fought over oil. In a short matter of time, they will be fought over water. Get to work and hear the news story that Jeff Bezos is getting married. His fiancée is spotted on their yacht, wearing the ring, as the radio presenter casually says how the other half live. When in actual fact, it's only the super rich that live like this. The top 1% of the world's population responsible for more than twice as much carbon emissions as the poorest half of humanity. Every morning my Windows login screen tries to remind me of how amazingly wonderful and breathtaking our planet is, whilst also showing me what we are destroying and what we are about to lose forever. A lorry's been outside for half an hour with its engine on. I want to approach the driver, but I haven't got the courage to ask them to switch it off. How do you even do that without getting abuse? A colleague is discussing upgrading their phone, and I reflect on our capitalist culture. Always upgrading, always buy new, more, 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 with no concept of our planet's dwindling resources. And not to mention how things are made, where they are made, and who suffers in the process. There's an article on social media about our food prices this April reaching a 45 year high. War and extreme weather events are responsible. Both are due to increase as a result of our warming planet. I'm crying as I walk past the nursery as I hear children playing outside. They're so innocent and have no idea of what a challenging, difficult and possibly short life lies ahead for them. Shame on us for turning our backs on innocent toddlers and babies alive today. I struggle just seeing babies in a pram these days. I feel like Sarah Connor every fucking day. I always try to print double sided where possible, as I pat myself on the back for saving the Amazon. Maybe a better use of my time will be to take direct action against companies directly responsible for deforestation. In the office we listen to Popmaster with Ken Bruce on Greatest Hits Radio and we're constantly reminded of their sponsorship deal with BP as their BP reward jingle plays over and over throughout the day. It's disgusting and it reminds me of when all tobacco adverts were banned due to their damaging impacts. Hello? What cigarette do you smoke, Doctor? Hey! 
BP aim to make every journey a little bit better. And what could be better than BP Me Rewards, where members earn points on every visit when they fill up and shop at BP. Points that you can put towards fuel, food and plenty more. BP, here for all of life's journeys. In 2019, BP spent more money lobbying against climate action than any other publicly owned company on Earth. Hello? There's a story shared on Facebook titled Global Heating Will Push Billions Outside Human Climate Niche. Somebody do something! And the general public's response during a climate emergency? We don't want to give you that! Actually, let's watch this instead. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Things are gonna be okay. Preparing food at lunchtime and being conscious of food waste as I think about all those suffering with lack of food around the world, including in this country. I start thinking about the inequality balance and how we are not all in the same boat. I then look down at my food choice, a cheese sandwich. But further dread and sadness seeps in as I think about how we claim to be a nation of animal lovers while still eating meat and dairy. The phrase, we're not in the same boat, applies here. Brilliant. The cognitive dissonance is rife. Our forklift trucks run on gas. The first forklift trucks I ever saw were electric ones. It got me thinking about gas as a fuel, and I remembered our plan to replace our gas hob at home with a fully electric one to reduce our emissions omphs. It all costs money initially to do the right thing. For instance, we can't afford an electric car, solar panels or to properly insulate our home. Not yet anyway. Even catching the train to work every day works out slightly more expensive than driving our family petrol car. Well, I did get rid of my car a few years ago. We were all trapped in this system of limited and forced choices. We as consumers are not free to choose between fossil fuels and a cleaner alternative because fossil fuel companies have rigged the system. I reduce my emissions and costs by cycling to work most days on a very busy and dangerous road. The lengths we go to to make the right choices can often be more expensive and far less convenient. We need cheaper and more convenient public transport ASAP. Do you ever feel like the only eco zealot in the village? We're taking action, Mr. Jones. No. 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 Casually reading the future of the human climate niche on my break, as if I was reading a fantasy novel, except this is a peer-reviewed paper written by scientists, a very real warning about the current path we're on. It states that by 2070, 3.5 billion people will be exposed to a mean annual temperature of 29 degrees, a situation currently only found in 0.8% of the global land surface, mostly concentrated in the Sahara, where conditions are unlivable for humankind. But by 2070, it's projected to cover 19% of our global land surface. Our suns will only be 52 and 56 if they reach that age at all. The current mean annual temperature for thriving populations is between 11 and 15 degrees Celsius. This rise will force mass migration, starvation, conflict and death. And yet we hear politicians talking about the continued use of fossil fuels in rich nations. In rich nations. More licenses for the North Sea. You cannot be serious! Knowing my friends and family will be concerned at my exposure to climate related news what's and what's termed as doom scrolling, as they tell me to take a break and stop thinking about it. I can't help it as I view life through a climate lens now. It's tarnished forever and there's no going back, a bit like the climate really. We really are on the edge and at the point of no return. I noticed someone highlighting the fact that the Metro newspaper has only given up a tiny thumbnail section and a number of pages back in its hard copy to report on the story that the world will warm above 1.5 degrees Celsius between now and 2027. 1.5 being the so-called safe limit set by the Paris Agreement. This actually happened at the beginning of June. When we say the media isn't doing its job to alert the British public to the dangers coming our way, this is what we mean. The mainstream media in the UK is owned by right-wing billionaires whose vested interests lie in the fossil fuel industry and continued business as usual at all costs, even if those costs are life itself. 
I've seen lots of Just Stop Oil footage today from our local northern team slow marching down in London. I just wish there was a better way, a better way to protest, a better way to convince our government to keep us safe. Or better still, that we didn't have to do this because our government was already protecting us by stopping all new oil, gas and coal exploration. This includes stopping fossil fuel subsidies to the tune of 12 billion a year. That's our taxes paying for that that could be spent on clean green energy solutions. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit uncomfortable about funding the future death of my own children, which is why I stand with and support Just Stop Oil. Their demand, no new fossil fuels. That's not come from Just Stop Oil. This comes from the Consensus on the Science, the International Energy Agency, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the government's own climate committee, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and all UK political parties apart from the Tories. Remember, this is not a passion of mine. This is not a cause. This is the fight for all life on Earth. If you're not fighting, then you're letting it happen on your watch. At break time in the afternoon, I usually go for a nature walk. I enjoy listening to the birds singing and spotting squirrels as I brush past trees covered in ivy, whilst taking deep breaths as I feel instantly calmer. Today, however, I'm thinking about last year's 40 degree heatwave as I consider cycling home later. I recall that it was simply just too hot to cycle or catch a train as the tracks were melting along with airport runways too, as planes struggled to land. I remember having to catch a taxi home to avoid being stranded at work. But I survived that day, while a large number of people in the UK lost their lives due to heat related deaths over that two day period. I see someone leave the light on as they leave the toilets. On one hand I feel compelled to tell everyone how important it is to turn lights and appliances off when they're not needed. But on the other hand it's a bit like campaigning against plastic straws whilst ignoring the fact that 50% of all ocean plastic is made up of discarded fishing nets from the fishing industry. Mark, I'll turn the light out. Well, can't you just dim it a bit? Yeah, okay. It's good, do it, but also don't ignore the bigger picture. More. The huge industries destroying everything potentially forever as we reach tipping points across many converging crises. How's that? Yeah, that'll do. Nice. Let battle commence. I walk onto the factory floor to hear the song If You Tolerate This Your Children Will Be Next by the Manic Street Preachers. It makes me think of the fascist anti-protest and human rights laws being passed by a draconian government. The New Public Order Act for example bans all effective protests that may cause even mild disruption with arrests more likely. You could face unlimited fines and up to 10 years in prison for serious annoyance and inconvenience. That's longer than some rape or grievous bodily harm cases. This is how much the government wants to squash dissent and keep you in check. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, said the legislation was deeply troubling and that it imposed restrictions on freedom of expression and peaceful assembly that are neither necessary nor proportionate. I receive an email at work inviting me to represent my company at another Climate Action Business Now forum, a local initiative run by my council inviting local businesses to come together to share best practices and help them move towards achieving net zero. I spoke a few months ago as I highlighted the seriousness of our time by lying on the floor in silence for one minute before I began my presentation. I stand here today as a climate activist, a sustainability champion for my company and as a father. A parent's talking about eating snails as she's travelling to France next week on holiday and I think as food runs out we'll be forced to find anything we can to eat to survive and I guess this means snails, insects and wild plants. I've heard already that people suffering food shortages due to climate impacts are even eating mud to desperately stay alive. This mother talks of losing one of her children after three days without food in Madagascar. Five years of the worst drought in decades and deforestation have transformed southern Madagascar into dust. Just look at the imbalance here. One mum talks of jetting off to Paris for a lavish holiday and another mum talks of losing a child after failing to find food for her family. Meditation time. Banana I clear my mind allowing me to focus on my family and my two boys. Who's picking them up from school? What's for tea? Is it bath night and how to stay calm under parenting pressures? What's wondering if we have time to unwind and relax? Maybe watch a film tonight. The entire planet is about to be destroyed. Or do I have a Zoom to attend? I'm not a cat. Right right I'm picking my son's prescription up from the chemist but thinking it's inevitable that when supplies begin to run low from the medical manufacturers as they collapse, 
this quiet, friendly pharmacy will be smashed up and looted, and all chances of me obtaining vital medication will be gone, putting our family's lives at risk yet again. After picking our four-year-old up as we got out of the car, we walk past a flowering bush and we stop and listen to the world. The tweets of the birds, the wind in the trees, and the bees buzzing around the bush collecting nectar. We sit down and watch the bees at work. In my head I'm thinking about the activist bees out on the roads today with Just Up Oil. I explain how important bees are and how all nature is precious and interconnected. We pick a huge dandelion from the garden to show mummy. He is mesmerised by nature, as I am. It's utterly incredible. The following section has been amended due to my fear of legal repercussions in naming the companies involved and revealing the documents I have received from them. All have now been redacted. I'm reading email threats from a legal firm on behalf of one of the biggest fossil fuel companies in the world as they threaten me and stipulate I must sign what's known as an undertaking. This is a promise I will not disrupt their business again. Breaking this forced agreement could land me in prison or I could face costly fines. But by not signing it, I'm told that they could come after my assets and family home to recover court costs for setting up the injunction anyway. One of the most powerful companies in the world, squashing me like a bug. The UK government is actively encouraging private firms and now sports events organisers to take out private injunctions against anyone trying to sound the alarm by disrupting business as usual. It's been just over four years since I went to my first Extinction Rebellion talk. This talk changed everything for me. After a series of anti-plastic campaigns and raising awareness about single-use items and waste-free lifestyle choices, I turned my attention to the biggest issue there has ever been. Climate change global warming, climate breakdown. It moved from an issue in the background of my mind to something that will affect every single aspect of my life and everyone else's on earth. Here's what I've changed in my life since then in no particular order. Sold my car, bought an e-bike, wooden toothbrush, plastic free soap bars, reusable drinking bottles, plastic free bags, became vegan, stopped flying, stopped using standby on my fucking big television, Chose fixed interest mortgage repayments from a company not investing in fossil fuels. Wrote to MPs, joined XR, joined Just Stop Oil, marched, protested, locked on, glued on, been arrested, set up meetings, told stories, been to 10 zillion zooms, stopped baths, ruined my own food, ditched plastic straws, been to court, signed petitions, lobbied councils, campaigned for green spaces to be saved from development, dressed as a bee, dressed as Captain Rebellion, been to London, trained in carbon literacy, researched the science every day, designed climate awareness banners and posters, held stalls, slow marched, cried, comforted, inspired and recruited, switched banks, switched energy supplier, switched pensions, switched gas hob to electric, attempted to buy an electric car, used public transport, shared news, science, the urgent warnings across social media, fly posted, shouted through a megaphone at the top of my voice. Curry sauce. I decided to learn how to make my own curry sauce to save money, but also to save on plastic tray waste. Every order from our local Chinese takeaway comes in plastic trays. I'm sure they used to use foil trays that were fully recyclable. Anyway, I nailed it. Yum! I notice our old red bucket outside has lost all its colour. But where did it go? The chemical colouring must have washed off into our garden over time. I'm thinking about this as I wash jars of old pesto out watching the remaining contents go down the drain and eventually into the sea and our atmosphere. The same can be said for microplastics from washing machines all over the world. We are poisoning our home with every action we take and it seems there's only a handful of us that actually care to think about this, let alone do something about it. Well, some of the crowd are on the pitch. Gary Lineker speaks out about climate protests. I think it's very worrying that you know, we, we lock people up that are actually trying to make sure that we have some kind of future. Um, I, understand why the, I understand why people can get upset because it's, it's disruptive um, demonstration. Um, but history kind of tells you the only demonstrations that really work are disruptive ones. But our over-reliance on fossil fuels, we've, we've got to find a way out of that because you know, we're going to destroy 
the future for our children and their children. And, and, and to be honest, that should be the biggest issue of the day. And we should all be trying to turn governments on it, not just relying on a few people that actually, they do stuff knowing that they'll probably be locked up. And, and I kind of admire that in a way. And I know it, I know it angers a lot of people, um, but that's kind of what they want because it's the only way it gets publicised and it's the only reason we're talking about it now. Tonight we're watching The Swarm, a sci-fi series about humans disrupting the ocean and nature fighting back. There are many parallels with reality and the damage we are doing to the ocean and all life it holds. If the ocean dies, we die. You should put out a warning against drinking, washing, having any contact whatsoever with any water which is not boiled or bottled. And all fishing off the Atlantic coast should also be suspended. Do you understand what you are asking for? That disruption to the region such measure will cause the economic impact? If this strain of Vibrio Vinificus continues to contaminate water system, the economic impact would be far more severe. You do not know for certain that the situation will worsen. You are merely speculating that it could worsen, right? <laughs> in all the years I've been investigating pathogens, this is the most deadly ever discovered. And if we have learned anything in recent years, is that the consequences of not acting quickly, decisively, can be fatal. And I would not want to be the person elected or appointed who didn't listen to the experts this time around. I bought this years ago, used it once and now it just sits there. The amount of items we own and don't need is staggering. But finding the time to sell or get rid of it all responsibly is a massive challenge. We all have so much pointless stuff we think we might use in the future, and yet don't have time to sell it and can't be forced to just bin things knowing they could have been reused by someone else. It means we're trapped in a stalemate situation, and we've become hoarders by default. Sam Smith's concert is cancelled as lights go out and people lose their shit. This is the big news of the day, apparently. People hate their lives being disrupted, don't they? When the penny drops that absolutely everything in their lives is set to be disrupted, they're really gonna lose it. Hopefully with the people causing the crisis. Point your anger and frustration, your effort and determination for a future at them, not the people trying to protect our world by sounding the alarm. Seeing Peter Kalmus, a NASA scientist, share a Facebook post from a year ago where he took non-violent direct action and stepped into civil resistance against the system that is killing us. Scientists all over the world are scared and are screaming from the rooftops to warn us we must change course. Basically, if we don't, we're facing extinction, along with millions of other species we share this amazing planet with. I'm willing to take a risk for this gorgeous planet. Sucks. I've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades that we're heading towards a fucking catastrophe. And we've been being ignored, the scientists in the world have been being ignored. 
and it's got to stop. We're going to lose everything. And we're not joking. We're not lying. We're not exaggerating. This is so bad, everyone, um, that we're willing to take this risk. And more and more scientists and more and more people are going to start joining us. This is for all of the kids of the world, all the young people, all of the future people. This is so much bigger than any of us. It's time for all, all of us to stand up and take risks and make sacrifices for this beautiful planet that gives us life, that gives us everything. Let me introduce the A22 Network, 12 civil resistance groups from around the world. Formed in April 2022, they took their first actions, including just up oil blocking oil terminals in the UK, of which I was a part. Today the Italian group Ultima Generazione stage a protest against their government's subsidies for fossil fuel exploration. Also on this day, police raid properties of the German group Last Generation in the latest crackdown on peaceful protest in their country. Tina Turner died today. It makes me think about death, a fear of mine, and it reminds me of lost loved ones and the history and fights that their generation fought to give me the life I have today. It reinforces that I must do the same for my children. I think about my fear of dying, but now I fear for my children and family. It dawns on me that climate breakdown is very likely to be linked to the cause of their future deaths. I receive a reply from the council concerning the spraying of herbicide in our local area. Banned in some countries, products like Roundup that contain glyphosate, a known chemical linked to cancer, are being widely used by councils up and down the country. The response to my complaint about the dangers posed to humans, animals and insects and our biodiversity including killing our crucial pollinators seems to have been sidestepped as they continue to spray pavements, parks and children's play areas indiscriminately with the poison. The UK deems this to be safe, however studies have shown that childhood exposure to the world's most widely used weed killer, glyphosate, is linked to liver inflammation and metabolic disorder in early adulthood, which could lead to liver cancer, diabetes and cardiovascular disease later in life. My overwhelming concern is for the protection of nature, of which we are a part. We are nature. The next day the British media are going to lose it over a just stop oil protest at the Chelsea Flower Show where some orange powder paint was thrown. This action hurt no one, it caused no distress or lasting damage or disrupted anyone's journey to work. And yet the media still vilified JSO and stirred up hatred whilst obsessing over the wrong type of tactics rather than focusing on why they are sounding the alarm. What's the point of admiring a beautiful garden? if we're going to turn our backs to the destruction we're all allowing to happen to our plants, trees and species we share our world with. We have to go. Just on foot. Just walk out of here. There, there, there are looters. People shooting each other for a bag of chips. It's dangerous. Well, what makes you think it's not too dangerous to stay? I'm already a bit security conscious. I usually do a last minute sweep of the doors and windows before bed. But tonight as I walk towards our patio doors in the dark, my mind jumps forward to 5, 10, 15 years as I picture desperate people outside wanting to get in. Wanting what we have. Maybe it's our water, our food, or medicine. It could also be people trying to find shelter in a safe place to flee violence and conflict themselves. But how would I know? I can't see a safe future as we rip apart our life support system. We shred any hope of a peaceful life. Tonight I stand with a key in my hand. Tomorrow it could well be a weapon.
So there you have it, one day of thoughts from someone fully aware of the risks and challenge ahead. We're seeing people stepping up, acknowledging what's unfolding around them, and simultaneously seeing others in complete denial of the situation. Ignorance is bliss. I don't want to remember nothing. Nothing. So what about you? We're all individuals with completely different circumstances, but all on the climate spectrum somewhere. It would be unrealistic for everyone to get arrested by taking part in direct action. But equally, to take no action at all at this time is utterly staggering. To look the other way as we miss the opportunity to do something is mind-blowing. It's time to step up into action, whatever that looks like for you, before it's too late. In the last 150 years, the world has warmed on average by just over one degree Celsius. And our atmosphere now contains concentrations of carbon dioxide that have not been equaled for millions of years. We are today perilously close to tipping points that once passed will send global temperatures spiraling catastrophically higher. We've got to find that point where we all step up. We take one step at this point beyond our comfort zone. I'm so grateful for every single one of you. It's so proud of you all. There's nothing more beautiful than being part of this community. And it is our responsibility and our privilege to resist at this crucial time. Maybe one day you might realise that there was never any reasonable excuse for endangering the future of life on Earth. If we continue on our current path, we will face the collapse of everything. The time for words is over. On this good green earth, we will take a stand with an open heart and a healing hand. With an open heart and a healing hand. Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with as many people as you can and follow on social media for upcoming content. Earlier in the week, I spoke to Marcus, pictured there at the top of the QE2 bridge, about his feelings on the climate and ecological emergency. This is what he had to say. The M25 remains closed at the Dartford crossing for a second day this lunchtime. Two environmental activists who scaled the bridge at the Dartford crossing. Early this morning, two Just Stop Oil supporters scaled the Queen Elizabeth II bridge. To demand the government halts all new oil and gas licenses and consents. What an incredible situation we find ourselves in. This is Marcus speaking, day 418 from behind bars here at High Point Prison. And yeah, I got here after climbing the QE2 bridge and that was after trying so many things, you know, after properly facing and grasping the reality of the climate ecological emergency that we're in the middle of. And I chose to try with Morgan to raised the alarm as loud as we could to think by putting that massive warning sign over the M25 and yeah I've, I've, I've been very much feeling like that's what it means to tell the truth and act as if the truth was real because of course a lot of people know about the climate crisis now but I feel like the urgency and severity of just how extreme the situation is now is not being acknowledged emotionally and physically enough so so for me to climb this extremely high bridge you know with just these ropes um holding us keeping us alive up there seems 
proportionately extreme enough to the crisis that we're in. And likewise, it was, it felt very much the same when I had a chance to explain the reasons and the background for something so mad, seemingly mad to a jury um, that, you know, with a bit of time um, to really go into the ins and outs of the situation and, and why drastic action is now necessary and you know that doesn't need to mean breaking the law but we need to see loads of people all over the place taking drastic action that is appropriate and that will help to address this extremely urgent extremely severe crisis now so that's how i ended up here